Have you ever wanted to work with animated textures or video inside Houdini? Well, stick around and let's figure it out together. Hi, my name is Kays and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. First of all, I need to apologize about my hair. It's getting weirder and weirder looking by the day and I'm probably like at least a month or two overdue from getting a haircut. Unfortunately, I can't. Don't be surprised if in an upcoming video, half of my head is shaven, probably like this half, because I'm right-handed and I can only reach this part. A funny thing is that like a couple of years from now, people have completely forgotten about the virus and they'll be watching this video and be like, what's that dude's problem? Why doesn't he just go get a haircut? Then again, like, Two years from now, uh, people will be using Houdini 20 or 21 and they'll be uh, thinking, why is he teaching all this convoluted stuff? It's so much easier to do in Houdini 20. Um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, animated textures and video in Houdini. So um, about a year ago, I uh, created a uh, music video for this electronic artist named Olivier Arand. Uh, I'm gonna post the link below so you can check out the full video and you should probably check out like Olivier's music because it's really really awesome. As part of this video, uh, you know, there's this girl that's kind of in this very sci-fi-ish looking room and at some point I wanted the room to light up and to kind of have uh, almost like a dance club feel to it and I thought like probably the best way to do this would be to use an animated texture to drive my emission and uh, you know and that's gonna look really cool and crazy and I just kind of like did some tests and stuff like that and I thought okay this is the way to do it so uh, the first thing I did is uh, I went into After Effects I used like the lightning advanced lightning uh, plugin in After Effects and I just kind of created this kind of weird half lightning half geometric kind of shapes type of pattern that I liked and I thought okay you know I just made it black and white with the white being uh, the part that I wanted to to actually kind of light up my scene and the black being anything that I didn't want the emission the first challenge about using video inside Houdini is that Houdini doesn't like like QuickTime or MP4. The only thing that Houdini wants to work with is image sequences. So the first thing that I needed to do is in my render settings, I had to change my setting from, you know, something like ProRes to a TIFF sequence with Alpha. And then if you go into the settings, of course, it doesn't have to be TIFF. Uh, it can be like DPX, JPEG, uh, PNG, uh, Targa, whatever it is that you want, but it has to be an image sequence. So uh, jumping into Houdini, um, I have like my basic scene. Right now this is textured using principal shader just so that we could see something in the viewport, but in the actual video I used the uh, redshift. So I, I want to drive like the emission with this. So you can kind of see here like the emission setting and uh, you know if I crank it up to 10 then everything kind of glows this uh, bluish tint. Okay, so uh, the thing that I figure I need to do is uh, go under my emission textures and say that I want to use a texture and basically point thing to uh, my first frame and then just kind of go in here change the animations, uh, the emission setting to 10 and, uh, and all of a sudden we have something that looks cool. I mean this is basically what I was going for, right? So the problem is that if I now hit play it doesn't change. So Houdini does not automatically see that this is part of an image sequence. It doesn't recognize that. It's just literally just looking at the first frame that I pointed it to and basically saying, okay, I guess that's it, you know. So how do we get Houdini to recognize this as an image sequence and basically uh, animate it for us? So we have to use our old friend $F right? I told you, this thing is magical in Houdini, $F. So basically, if we change the number here from uh, 0 to $F, my emission is animated, and this is really, really cool. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this, you know, this type of effect that's kind of like uh, driving my emission through this texture, and this is doing exactly what I had imagined that I wanted to do. But we quickly run into an issue and the issue is that my Houdini project has got more frames than I actually rendered After Effects. So it's running out of frames and it's kind of glitching and stuff like that because it doesn't really know what the hell to do now. Right now, let's see, what do I have? About, uh, about like 72 frames. So I need to be able to loop it, okay? And if we look under my emission settings here, there is no 
option to loop. So we have to use a little bit of code. Once again, this is not very right-brained at all. Unfortunately, Houdini being what it is, we can't really do it any other way, at least not as far as I know. So the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, see how many files I have here. So I have like 72 actual frames. Knowing that, we're going to do a little bit of typing to get Houdini to understand that we want to repeat the sequence every 72 frames. So the very first thing that we want to do is we create an expression and we're going to start it by using a backtick. If you can see my keyboard, a backtick is not this single quote right here on this side of the keyboard. The backtick is actually found right uh, below the escape key right here. It's uh, where the tilde kind of uh, symbol is. That's where the backtick is. So not this guy, this guy. All right. So we're going to type back tick and then we're gonna follow it with a parenthesis and then uh, we're gonna do like dollar f and then what we're gonna use is a percentage symbol okay and under the after the percentage symbol I'm gonna write 72 for the amount of frames that I want to loop then I'm gonna close my parenthesis and add another back tick and that's it and now that we've done that if I hit play my sequence of images loops over and over as long as, you know, as long as my scene is. So, I mean, if I want to like go in here and add even more frames, let's add like 250 frames. So it's like that much longer. And I just hit play. You're just going to keep going and going and going because every time that it will go through like 72 frames, it's going to reset right back to the beginning and play another 72 frames and then reset back to the beginning, play another 72 frames, reset back to the beginning, and so on and so forth. So this is how we get to loop an image sequence inside of Houdini. All right, so let's take a look at another scenario here. So uh, I just have like this basic grid and I just kind of assigned it principal shader here in Houdini. Once again, I'm just using the principal shader just so that we can kind of see what, what's going on. What I have is I have another sequence. This is a uh, this is actually like a bump sequence, but um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use it as a diffuse sequence. And the reason why is because Houdini doesn't really display bump in uh, the viewfinder. It can display normals, turns out, but not actual bump maps. So anyway, so I like this kind of rain uh, pattern here with uh, drops and stuff like that. It's really useful, especially when you use it with uh, glass and things like that. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it um, under a base color right here, first frame, go for it, and we get it, right? And if we want it to play, then we're just gonna replace the very last numbers of it with $F, right? That's how it works. Except when I do this and I hit play, nothing happens. You can see the texture just went away. So what is going on exactly, and why am I not seeing my texture? Because $F really matches the frame number. The problem is that the way this file is numbered, it's got 0, 0, 0, 0, so five, five zeros where like the last digit starts being the frame number. So how do we deal with this frame sequence where there's a bunch of zeros before the actual frame numbers. So what we can do is quite simply add a number after $F that matches the amount of digits the image sequences has in its name. There are five digits, one, two, three, four, five, and we are gonna use F5. So now when we do that, now we can see that, look at that, our texture is back, and now if I hit play, it's playing back. However, as you might have noticed, once again, this sequence is a little too short for my actual project. So it's uh, 48 frames. So let's fix it the way that we fixed it before so that it loops, right? So uh, once again, I'm just gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna do a back take. I'm gonna do parenthesis. I'm gonna do $F5, okay? And then I'm going to do a percentage, and then um, I'm going to do like 48, because that's the amount of frames. And I'm just going to close my parentheses, put another back tick, and boom. Uh-oh. What happened here? So if I hit play, this is not working. Why is it not working? 
Because for reasons that I cannot explain to you, this five doesn't work when we're using this backtick and this parenthesis method. I don't know why, it just doesn't. So what we have to do is we have to tell Houdini that there are these zeros before our frame number. So let's get rid of this five right here. Okay? That doesn't bring our texture back. So what we need to do is between the first back tick but before the start of the parenthesis, we need to put in this term which is called pad zero. So what it's literally saying, it's gonna say pad this many zeros in front of the frame number and then you can start using the frame number. Okay, but we're not done yet. So now we need to go inside our parenthesis and before we hit the dollar F, we have to tell Houdini how many zeros or how many digits really there are in this file name. And as I said, like we have five, so we just can type five and then we need to put in a comma, okay? So that Houdini knows that, hey, there is five digits in the file name, then change, uh, you know, the, the, the texture file so that uh, every frame you're updating one and then every 48 frames you want to loop back. So if we hit play now you can see that our sequence plays back and now we're you know we're kind of looping it's not like a smooth loop unfortunately but at least it's looping and we're getting the texture to do what it is that we want it to do. Not very right-brained I know but this is Houdini after all. Okay, let's look at another test case scenario if you want to bring video into Houdini, but not necessarily as a texture. What I have here, uh, we're in Blender. <laughs> this is Blender, folks. And, um, and what I use Blender for is to do a uh, camera track of this piece of footage that I shot with my friend Steven. Um, I can do, if there is a request for this type of tutorial, how to do camera tracking in Blender and then bring it into Houdini, I'll be happy to do that. So uh, if you're interested, please tell me about it in the comments below and uh, I'll uh, do a future tutorial or maybe I'll do like kind of a series of tutorials that teaches you, you know, how to work with footage, get your footage tracked in Blender, bring that stuff into Houdini and then um, add your CG effects into Houdini. So, uh, so just let me know. Anyway, so I have like some footage here uh, that as I said, I um, shot with uh, my friend Steven and, uh, and I got it tracked into Blender. And then what I did is in Blender, I exported an Alembic file with my camera and then I brought that into Houdini. So now in Houdini, I have my actual camera motion the way we have it and I added some geometry because I don't know, I wanted to make it look like some sort of sci-fi tunnel or something like that with uh, kind of crazy lights and stuff like that. So I have like my camera move, I have my geometry that I brought in there. The problem is that I don't really have a reference of the footage in here and I would like to be able to look at my footage against my, you know, CG elements at least before I render it, right? So uh, I have my Alembic uh, folder here. This is kind of how Alembic files come into Houdini. So if I jump in here, there's like another uh, uh, little node uh, that's a camera node and I'm gonna jump into the camera nodes. And if I go under my view tab right here, there is a little tick box for enable background image, which we want to enable. And then there is a little setting to say background image. So I'm just gonna click on this and I've already gone in, this time I did it into Resolve. I use Resolve to uh, basically turn my ProRes file into an image sequence. And uh, I'm just gonna go in here and I have like, you know, my footage frame by frame. So I'm just gonna point it to the first frame and I'm just gonna click Open. So that's what we wanted, right? And now, uh, because this is a uh, image sequence, we are going to add the dollar F. Now, uh, let me stretch this out. Okay, great. So we're going to replace this 0001 with dollar F, but not five, because in this particular case, there's only four digits, right? If you look at the file name, we have four digits. We don't have five like we had in the rain example, but this only has four. So instead of using F5, we're just going to say F4. And now if I hit play, we have 
video so we know exactly how our geometry is moving with the video and this is really really cool and uh, you know it allows us to work with you know video inside Houdini and you know be able to kind of see a little bit what it is that we're doing and um, I'm just gonna cover one last thing just in case so you know absolutely everything that I know about working with video and image sequences inside of Houdini. So um, in some cases uh, some image sequences start at zero however Houdini's frame is um, always starts at one okay so some programs like to start the frame at zero 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 and Houdini likes to start at zero zero one. How can you change the start point of your image sequence in Houdini and we're gonna do that once again with the backtick method so what we're gonna do is once again do like the, our little backtick we're gonna do pad zero it would help if I spell pad zero correctly uh, parenthesis we're gonna get rid of the four we're gonna put like a four followed by a comma so that Houdini knows that there is four digits into the uh, name of the file and then at that point we can use simple math so uh, in this particular case if I want to offset my video by one frame and I want it to start like one frame sooner I can just type in minus one and then close the parenthesis put another back tick but I mean this is how we can kind of change like the start time so like you know I could do like minus five I can do uh, plus five and basically this is a way to offset the start point of our image sequence within Houdini so in some cases you might want to do that because maybe I don't know you got like an image sequence from a video editor but maybe it's a little too long and you don't really need to start it from the very first frame and you want to start it from like a later frame so I mean this is how you do that and it's a really simple and easy way so either minus for whenever you want to go backwards with a start frame or plus whenever you want to go forward with whatever the first frame is and um, and that's how you do it so the only other thing that you should know about working with video in Houdini is that image sequences by their very definition don't have a frame rate they are nothing more than you guessed it sequences of images right so you need to make sure that whatever the frame rate of the original video Houdini has the same setting and of course we can uh, choose exactly what the frame rate is right here the global animation options and in this particular case it does match uh, 24 frames per second is what my original footage was so if you're working with like 30 frames per second obviously you would need to change that to 30 or 29.97 or what have you so just make sure that whatever the frame rate of your footage is is matched right here in your global animation options otherwise the video is not going to sync so anyway, I hope you liked this tutorial. I hope you're gonna be able to now use videos. I know it's a little clunky in Houdini, but it's Houdini after all, right? So anyway, if you liked the video, please hit like. If you didn't like the video, I guess hit dislike. Uh, definitely subscribe, definitely tell your friends, and see you next time.